Hi, this is Russ Anderson. One question I'm starting to get is how you can perform the 360 VR stabilization that Synthize does in other compositing applications. In other words, how can you get the stabilization out of Synthize and into some other compositing application so that you can do all of your compositing and the work on the image itself within that application rather than having to round trip to Synthize to do the stabilization part of it. Now, it's not practical to reproduce all the Synthize distortion and stabilization functionality as plugins in every other app. You know, there's just too many different programs and versions and operating systems. But we do have a general method for doing this sort of thing that we can use for this. So Synthize can export color-based distortion maps from the image preprocessor. And those are things that look like this. And like I said, it, it's typically used now for distortion maps. And you can get any kind of image distortion in this. And the, the deal is that the two colors, the red in one direction and green in the other, are saying for each pixel in this image, where do we want to get the pixel from in the source image. So it's a way of encoding any kind of distortion within an image rather than having to have all kinds of crazy equations that are different in different programs. So this technique can also be used for the stabilization data. The one catch with the stabilization, of course, is that now you have not just a single image like you do for distortion, but you need to have animated images being written out with the stabilization images. So in fact we can do that and I'm going to show that here and we're going to use just the example from the big multi-part virtual reality tutorial where here we've got the scene all nice and stabilized and world coordinates so that our sun is fixed. The original footage from the now 360 Rise people is is fairly bumpy and so the question is well how can we get this stabilized image so that we can you know generate the same thing in a downstream application and I'm going to show that using fusion today so what we're going to do is fire up a script it's just it's actually off the edge but it's called uh, save map sequence so rather than generating an image map just once we're going to generate the entire sequence and we're just going to put it out somewhere and you'll notice we get to select a couple different kinds of files to do that and the key point is that we do really pretty much need to use floating point images to describe the distortion as accurately as possible if your the images that you're distorting are low resolution images you know, SD or maybe HD, you might be able to get away with 16-bit images. But certainly for VR images that are trending towards 4K and higher, just want to be using those floating point images all along. So these particular formats that are available are ones that can support that in Synthize. So I'm just going to select this. You'll notice we have the uh, number of digits in the file name there. And then we let this thing go. I'll point out this is just kind of a script that's running, so it's not a super user interface friendly sort of thing in that uh, you know Synthize is basically hung up while it's doing that as that script runs. And so the way that we'll just monitor it is just to sit and watch that folder itself. And you can see it's cranking them out. And you can see that the individual images look like these little kind of squiggly, sigmoidy sorts of things that reflects the kind of thing that you need to describe what's happening with the stabilization. So this is going to go on for a little while. So I'm just going to pause for a second while it does that, and I'll be right back. So here we are back again, and you see we get a little dialog pop-up that says that it's done. We've got our 300-odd 
images sitting out there in the folder. This Windows works out what all the little icons are. So let's just hit done on that. I just want to point out also that there are a bunch of preferences out here in the file export section that allow you to set the format used for each of those different image types that Synthize can use for writing those uh, image distortion maps. So you can select either some 16-bit format or a floating point format. And there are a couple different options as to whether you have an alpha image uh, data there also, and whether it's pre-multiplied or not. So I just wanted to point out that that's there. So now we're ready to hop on over to Fusion. And I've got a loader set up already that has our overall shot in it. So this is the original version of the shot with the bouncing around. So let's see if we can stabilize that just here inside of Fusion using the data that we just wrote out. So to do that, we're going to open up another loader. And we're going to select the sequence that we just wrote. Now one key point to this is that we want to make sure that there's no color management going on here because the colors are describing exactly where the pixels are to come from. So we don't want any of the software anywhere in the tool chain to be messing with that data. So I think the right approach in Fusion is to set these to spaces here and there's no gamma and it looks like it's doing no color space conversion as well. So hopefully that's the right thing and for your Fusion guy perhaps you know what the right thing is for sure. So our next step, I'm going to go and I'm going to pull one of the color based image mapping nodes out of one of my other scenes, uh, this was the result of exporting to Fusion the stabilization earlier. This was from one of the other tutorials. And I'm just going to take this image remapping node that uses the color data to do the remap. So I'm just going to copy it. And this node is generated automatically by the regular Fusion exporter. And so I'm just going to go and paste it in over here. So let's see, we've got that connected up as it turns out in the right spot. And now we're going to take our original source image, we're going to connect it into image two. And now we'll go, oops, let's see, we want to keep this one on two, keep the original on one. Let's point out. For starters, you know, here's our incoming sequence of image maps. You can see it wiggling all around to do the, you know, describe the distortion. So now when we look at the results of that, voila, there you go. And you've got the stabilized image inside of Fusion just based on these two image sequences. One, the, based on the original image, the same image sequence that was fed into Synthize once upon a time, and the stabilization image sequence that was written by Synthize using that one particular script. So it's a pretty nice technique for being able to do this. You can get you know, arbitrarily complicated effects from one program to another. And I'll point out, you know, you can do this, the same thing. The other option on that script would let you write the images to redistort or basically to unstabilize, in this case, the images. So we could take this stabilized image and go back to the bouncy image if we wanted, for that matter. So you can put any kind of data into these image maps that you want. The main drawback, of course, is that you have to spend the time to generate those images and they burn up a bunch of space just because they're a full floating point images. You know, it, it turns out if we had a specialized image format for those 
you know, that would greatly reduce the amount of storage because those images, let's face it, they don't really change very much from one pixel to the next and one line to the next. But, you know, the good thing is, hey, inside of Fusion or whatever your application is, you're, you're just doing this kind of linear lookup thing, which is quite, quite quick relative to doing a whole bunch of trigonometry stuff that's necessary to do the um, rotation of the image to stabilize it if you were to do it directly. So it's, it's kind of cool in that respect. And one other thing I'll point out, just with this kind of image mapper, it's not, you know, it's not smart where there are seams along the big transitions here. So you might see a little single pixel seam right along that spot if you look carefully. Um, that's pretty much the way it goes at this point. Kind of usually with the VR stuff, there's <laughs> plenty of other seams going on instead. I think much of what you'd see here is going to get lost in the compression anyway and wouldn't be small in the first place. So, you know, drawback takes some time, burns up some disk. The good part, it's fast, and hey, you can do it right today. So, thanks for watching.